What's up, YouTube fam? It's Patrick. Welcome back to our weekly practice sessions. I'm stoked to get these back going with y'all. Thank you so much for all your support on my first recovery vlog that I posted last week. Um, excited to let y'all know that there's going to be a lot more coming to this channel for 2021. So make sure to stay tuned, make sure to subscribe, like this video if you enjoy the class, and a lot more is going to be coming your way. I'm excited to start sharing things on a much more consistent basis again moving forward. So not only will we be having the weekly classes, but we'll also have some other little hits coming your way. With that being said, let's get into class. For today's practice, all you're going to need is yourself, your yoga mat, and if you have a few pillows or a yoga bolster towards the end of the practice, it might be nice, but again, it's not required in the slightest. Let's go ahead and get started on our backs today. Set yourself up as if you're going into your bridge pose. So have the heels nice and close to the hips. Let your shoulders land on the floor. Let the back of the head land. Close the eyes gently. Let's take a few breaths together here. Exhale, clear the system. You can put one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly, just so the breath can have a bit of a physical feeling to it as well. Deep inhale, feel the chest rising, get expansive, let yourself open. Exhale, close, clear. Inhale, rise, open. Exhale, close, clear. Inhale, rise, open. Exhale, close, clear. Know that you can always come back into this breath throughout the course of the practice, just something that settles you down, something that taps you into the present moment. All right, let your fingertips touch the backs of your Achilles tendon. Set yourself up for bridge pose here. And this is going to be a pulsing bridge. So begin to drive the heels down, feel activity through the feet, and lift the hips up. And remember, it doesn't have to be your biggest bridge pose. It could be something just like this, or you could organize your shoulders and push through the feet a little bit more. Do what feels right to you. As you reach the top, go ahead and lower down, and then lift back up. We're going to go for roughly 10. Again, the amount of time it takes for me to do 10, you could do 5, or you could do 25. You're just trying to work in through the legs, feel everything activating from the feet, through the calves, hamstrings, glutes, thighs, opening through the hips. Let your effort be consistent. Try to find a light hold at the top. And really feel an overall available consistency to your movement here. And what I mean by available consistency is you're not straining, but you're working. And you're working at a good pace. You're finding something that feels nice and available for you. All right, on this last one, let's hold the top position. Maybe you search for a little bit more height here, but again, nothing too extreme. Push the feet down, lift the hips up, lengthen through the spine and the front body, and go ahead and release. As the hips land, reorganize the shoulders, and then reach your right leg up like towards the sky, <laughs> no like needed there. Reach your left foot forward. I was gonna say your legs are in an L-like shape, but like jumped the gun. Either way, tailbone tucks underneath. Let's pulse the hips here for 10, working into the core. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the top position and then switch. From here, pulse, left leg high, right leg low. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold the top position, right leg lifts up to the sky, big toes touch, knees into chest, squeeze knees, squeeze inner ankles, feel the core working. Try to have the knees touch, the collarbones squeeze in that much, fight for those extra centimeters, and then slowly begin to reach the feet out towards the top of the mat for 10, 9, go slow, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Find your low boat pose, lift shoulders, lift skull, rise up into your high boat, and then cross the ankles, find your way. 
onto hands and knees. As you make it there, go ahead and circle the shoulders over the wrists a few times, getting into the hands, getting into the spine, finding some freedom here, finding some available movement. Notice the awareness you have into your core and how that can create you know, more availability essentially in your practice. All of a sudden your body's just a little bit more awake, a little bit more tuned in. Everything's a little bit more available. As you find your center here, hands feel good, shoulders feel good. Go ahead and flip the hands so the fingers point back towards the knees. And then inhale, pull the chest through, lifting the heart. And exhale, round in to upper back body. Inhale, curve the chest out, lifting the heart. Exhale, round in. Inhale, curve out. And exhale, round in. Find these movements, let them be subtle. Inhale, round out. And know that you're working at your current capacity. It's something that I'm focusing on so much in my own practice. Exhale, round in. Last one here really holds. Release. Sit back to the heels, toes tucked or untucked. If you can tuck the toes, please do. It'll help you throughout the rest of the practice. That is just not in my current physical capacity right now. So if you're in the same boat as me, ride the wave. Interlace hands at heart center, deep inhale. Exhale, push the hands forward, round into your upper back body. Inhale, reach your hands up towards the sky. And then exhale, round down. Inhale, reach up. Look up, let the chest follow your hands. Almost let the belly button follow your hands. See what that feels like. Exhale, round down. Inhale, reach up. Lifting through the front line of the body, really pushing your palms up and away. Exhale, round down. Inhale, push up, lift up. Exhale, release, pull elbows down towards hips, opening the heart. Bring your fingertips behind your toes. Drive through the shins, lifting up. Notice how this is so similar to our bridge pose. Take a breath here. Exhale, release. Place the hands just in line with the knee, setting yourself up for flying integration. 10 second hold here, push into the palms. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, drive down, lift the knees up into the chest. Really feeling a good push here, spinning the eyes, the elbows forward, lifting through your lower belly, holding this space for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, on one, let it go. Take a moment here, take two breaths, just feel integrated in the practice. All those little pieces really helping you wake up from the midsection, letting that energy move from inside out. Place your hands down at the top of the mat. Step back into your downward facing dog when you feel ready. As you get into your downward facing dog, as usual, tap into your animalistic nature. So bending the knees, swaying the hips, moving a little left, moving a little right, finding an ability to get into your side body, side waists, to create some opening, create some freedom. Go ahead and return to center here. Push into the palms. Inhale, way forward into your plank pose. From your plank pose, take a vinyasa. So as you know, with awakening yoga, we take the full push up, knees and forearms drop. And then the inhale pulls you through into upward facing dog. The exhale cruises you back into your downward facing dog. That's the way I'll cue it. If you'd like to take the more traditional variation, by all means, feel free. Either way, let's take one more. Inhale, sweep forward into your plank pose. On your exhale, move through the push-up. Knees and forearms drop. Inhale, pull through upward facing dog. Exhale, sweep back into your downward facing dog. As you make it there, push into the palms. Find that drive through the hands, look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step or float feet to the outside of your hands. Inhale, rise into active squat. Exhale, straighten legs, hands to heart. Inhale, reach your hands all the way up. Exhale, sit your hips down. Inhale, hands to floor, elbows bent. 
vinyasa. Find a lightness to moving forwards and backwards. Use your breath to create the connection to help you build heat in the body. The breath is powering you up. It's also creating space for control and stability. Look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step or float feet to the outside of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten legs, hands to heart. Inhale, stretch your hands up above you. Exhale, sit the hips down. Inhale, hands to floor, elbows bend, and you flow. Consistent, steady, strong. Find the power that lives within you. Find the poise and the focus that lives within you. Two more rounds here. Push into the hands. Look forward. Lift heels. Bend knees. Step or float feet to the outsides of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten legs, hands to heart. Inhale, reach up. Look up. Exhale, sit the hips down. Inhale, hands to floor, elbows bend. Vinyasa. Beautiful work here. Trust yourself, move with a sense of structure and with a sense of freedom. Last round, look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step or float feet to the outsides of your hands. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, straighten legs, hands to heart. Inhale, stretch your hands up. Exhale, sit your hips down. Inhale, hands to floor, elbows bent. Vinyasa. As you find your way back into downward facing dog, drop your forearms to the floor. Dolphin pose. Drive through the forms. Feel the energy here. Feel the work of your dolphin pose. Organize yourself a bit. Notice how I'm adjusting my hands and making sure I'm finding that space where my forearms are parallel with one another. I have a good drive through the lower arm bone. I feel my shoulders lifting away from the floor. You can look back at the toes. You can walk the feet closer, bend the knees. Find the space that feels good to you here. Slowly lower your knees back down to the floor. Untuck the toes, sit back to the heels. Right hand plants behind your feet. Drive through the shins. Inhale, reach your left arm up and overhead, half circle camel. Exhale, sit back to the heels. Left hand plants behind the feet drive through the shins. Lift the pockets of your pants as you reach the right arm up and overhead. And then sit the hips back down. Place your hands behind your feet. Drive through the shins, lifting up. Get longer through this front line of the body. Exhale, release. Place your hands back at the top of the mat. Journey into your downward facing dog. Feel a new sense of space in the shoulder, a new sense of availability for your breath. How can you lengthen your spine in down dog here? Our next movement to the top is going to be taking the feet to the thumb. So look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step or float feet in between the hands. Land lightly, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your hands up towards the sky. Get as long and tall as possible. And then exhale, hands move through heart center as you fold all the way back down. Step your left foot back long. Lower the left knee down and back stroke through the right arm, reaching for the outside of the left ankle if it's available. So as you know, we call this twisted lizard lunge. And what you really want to do here is stretch your right knee forward. Inhale, peel the right shoulder up and back as you let the left hip sink down and in. Get long through the skull. Push down into your right big toe. Find a consistency to your breath. On your exhale, release. 
Straighten your front right leg in some capacity as you sit back into your half splits pose. Ardha Hanuman. And as you know here, straight is always relative. We want to focus on this relationship between our upper body and our lower body. So leaning the chest forward, using your upper body as the leverage to create space, to find a line of tension, and to work into it. Bend the right knee, tuck the left toes, find your high lunge. So lifting your left knee off the floor, push down through your right big toe. Work into the stability or potentially the instability of the situation. Remember to breathe. Find your drishti, find your gaze, find a focal point for your vision. Lock in there. Sit into the intensity of the pose. See if you can sit the hips a little bit lower and keep working to straighten that back left leg. Reach up through the fingers. Let the arms be active and part of the process. Release, lower your hands to the floor. Step back into your downward facing dog. Bend elbows and knees. Look forward. Pull yourself through into upward facing dog. And then exhale, scoop yourself back into downward facing dog. One more like that. Scoop yourself out into upward facing dog. And then scoop yourself back into downward facing dog. I know that can be tough, but you're doing excellent. Stick with it. Find your breath, push into the palms. Look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step or float feet to thumbs. Find a lightness as you land. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up. Try to get longer, taller, more elevated. Exhale, hands move through heart center as you fold all the way down. Step your right foot to the back of the mat. Lower the right knee down, and then backstroke through the left arm. Catch the outside of the right foot. Kick and peel yourself open just a bit. Notice how you can create some more opening. Maybe just notice how you can feel better. Right, the left foot can be far out in front of you. It's like kind of mosey mind there. You can stretch the left knee over the big toe. You can let it splay out to the side. You just want to focus on a feeling. Right? Each posture has a general theme to it, of course, but the organization and the way you choose to play it is always your prerogative. It's always your choice. Exhale, release. Push your hips back in space. Fold over the left shin. Try to lean the heart forward just a bit. Create some space. Stretch through the skull. Lift your tailbone up and away. Consistent breath in and out. Lift through the collarbones. Reach through the top of the skull. Take two more breaths here. Let yourself marinate in this space. Again, work into that line of tension. Bend your left knee. Tuck the right toes. Let's find a long, high lunge. So push into the right big toe and then lift up. And I know this is going to be a lot of work, so stick with it. Sometimes, as the teacher doing the practice, I always feel like the cues are partially for you as well. I always have to remind myself to, you know, tap into some of these spaces to make sure I'm not just marking, but to really give the effort to tune in. And my Achilles tendon and my right foot in general is such a big reminder of that for me right now because I really have to zone in and make sure the right foot's doing its job. It's part of the equation. It's doing what it can. That's always what you should focus on. Not necessarily 100% what's offered, you know, following the practice is part of the practice, of course, but what can you do? What's available for you today? 
How can you work into that space with honesty and integrity? Last inhale here. On your exhale, hands to the floor. Let them land, step back into your downward facing dog. As the feet land, bend elbows and knees, look forward. Pull yourself through into your upward facing dog. Cruise back into your downward facing dog. One more time here. Pull yourself through into your upward facing dog. Cruise back into your downward facing dog. As you make it here, this time roll forward into your plank pose. And lower to the ground in five, four, three, two, one. As you land, set the hips, set your fingertips. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, lower. Oscillating cobra. Three more times. Inhale, lift. Find your freedom. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Locust pause. Inhale, rise. Heavy hips, squeeze the shoulders together, lift through the feet, through the shins, through the shoulders. Feel your belly button elevating. Stretch through your fingers. Find stability here. Trust yourself. Stick with it and then let it go. Close your eyes and drop an ear to the floor. Let yourself recover for a moment. Our next transition, if you will, is going to take us from locust pose into upward facing dog. So bring your chin to center. Adjust yourself as needed. Open your arms up like a cactus, like a field goal post. So the hands are a bit closer to the ears than the hips. Inhale, lift your front body up and away from the floor. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift through the feet. Find strength in your elevation. Try to get long behind the knees. Bring your hands down underneath the shoulders as you would for upward facing duck. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, roll back as you find your way into the downward facing dog position push into the palms look forward lift heels bend knees step or float feet to hands inhale halfway lift exhale fold Inhale, reach your hands up to the sky. Unravel the spine. Stretch through the fingers. Get longer and taller. Exhale, bring your hands back to heart center. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. Step your left foot back long. Drop your left heel. Bend your right knee. Find your way into side angle pose. You can have your hand, right hand on the floor or right elbow on the knee and reach your left arm up and overhead. Feel the churning of your space here. Feel the ability to lift your lower belly and spin your left rib cage up towards the sky. Working through the left leg, the left calf, try to lift your inner arch just a bit more. Slowly lower down. Left hand finds a home on the floor. Roll to the outer edge of your left foot. Stack right foot on top of left side plank. If you want to tap the right toe behind the knee, of course, feel free. Work into a space that's interesting to you today. Working through the legs, breathing into your left side body to lift the right side body. On your exhale, right hand to the floor. Find plank pose. Take your inhale. 
On the exhale, lower all the way to the ground. Set your fingertips up, oscillating cobra pose. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. One more here. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Locust pose into upward facing dog. Lift elbows, lift hands, squeeze shoulder blades together, point through the feet, find the elevation, find the lift, holding your space here for five. Give it your greatest effort, four, three, two, hands underneath shoulders, inhale, rise, up, exhale, downward, facing dog, feel space every step of the way. Push into the palms, look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Step, float feet up to your thumbs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up, get long and tall. Exhale, hands move through heart center, fold. All the way down. Right, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, the right foot steps towards the back of the mat. Setting yourself up in your warrior two feet, your side angle feet. And then we're coming right into that side angle pose. So spin the rib cage up. Feel a good amount of movement through the spine here. Imagine that your right shoulder is really wrapping onto your back body. Do your best to lift your inner right arch up just a bit and sit deeper into your left knee. Keep coming back into trust, trusting yourself, trusting your breath, finding a home in your practice, finding a home within yourself. Be rooted into your right foot as you're rooted into your past. Be exploratory in your left leg as you're exploratory through your heart, mind, and spine, seeking what's next. Last inhale here. On your exhale, right hand to the floor. Set yourself up for your journey into side. Plank any way you want to take it. Push down through the outer edges of the feet. Lift your side body up. And just as we did on the first side, if you want to step the left foot over and behind, feel free. Or you can really drive and lift your side waist, creating that arching position. Grip through the right hand. Find your strength here. Trust yourself. Take one more inhale. On your exhale, let the left hand find the floor as you find plank pulse and lower all the way down with a little bit of grace. As you land, last two rounds of oscillating cobra today. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Elbows to floor, hands by the ears, if you will. Locust into upward facing dog. Inhale, rise. Find that elevation. Find length in your legs. Imagine that you're just picking up the spine one vertebrae at a time. Hands underneath shoulders. Inhale, rise and lift. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Close everything off. Feel a true sense of freedom in your spine. We have one more active pose in our practice today. So push into the hands, look forward, lift heels, bend knees, float, step, find your way onto your back. As you make it there, set yourself up the same way we began, bridge or wheel. Tips of fingertips touch, backs of the Achilles tendons. Place your hands and feet for wherever 
he would like to go today and then rise up, lift off. It doesn't ever have to be your best version of the pose, but one that represents you right now. Showing up is such a huge part of the experience. Begin to trust yourself in that process, in that game. Exhale, release. Lowering down. Let your hips find a home on the floor. Maybe you let the knees drop middle. Let the shoulders land comfortably. Let the body be comfortable. Let the mind be comfortable. You gave a great deal of effort in our practice today. Appreciate it. You're still here. You may be wondering why we have this bolster on set or why I talked about you catching a few pillows or pulling them around the space. It's for this moment here. What we're going to do is set up a supported reclined hero's pose to close our practice, and that's where I'm going to leave y'all today. I always like to take the bolster towards the back edge of the mat, setting the shins down on the floor, and then tucking the tailbone underneath just a bit. It takes a touch of time to set up in a proper way, and you can always have more pillows than I'm using here. But this just allows you to lean back and drop down and rest in a very gentle place. Find yourself here or somewhere like it. Maybe opposite hand catches opposite elbow above your head. If you have a top knot going, it kind of gets in the way. But that's such as life. Deep inhale, long exhale, deep inhale, long exhale, deep inhale, long exhale, deep inhale. Long exhale, deep inhale, long exhale. Remove the focus from your breath and allow yourself to marinate here for as long as you'd like. You may want to close with a seated meditation or a simple supported shavasana. Whatever feels good to you. Thank you all so much for joining me for this practice today. It was fun to share space with you again. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I look forward um, to continuing to share with you all in the future. If you enjoyed this class, of course, please like the video. It helps support the channel, of course, and shows me what practices you all enjoy most. Anyways, hope to see you again soon. Have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.